Hey friends, it is Lisa Mason Ziegler coming to you here for Ask a Flower Farmer. I see I got a little shade on my face there. Um, so welcome everybody. I love meeting with you guys here every Wednesday to answer as many questions as I can. But I have made a promise to a lot of people that I'm going to talk about something for just a couple of minutes. And that is cool flowers and temperature. And so what I want to say is that folks are really struggling with when to figure out when to direct seed outdoors and then when to plant their transplants outdoors. Because um, what you kind of quickly become aware of when you start you know, becoming either a really avid gardener or diving into flower farming is the weather never really does what you expected it to do, what the directions tell you it's going to do, right? So you really have to first off understand that you have wiggle room, that you have to use your own um, common sense applying the concept and do the very best that you can, right? So, for instance, so I've written some, a couple things down here. Um, folks that are really concerned about direct seeding. Direct seeding um, is something that if you do it at the wrong time, what that basically just means is that the seeds are going to be delayed in germinating. And that means, but you, you can be promised what will not be delayed germinating. And that is the weed seeds. So it just kind of means you'll probably have success still, but there'll be a lot more preventative steps that you need to take. So what I'm looking for to plant outside in our garden is, you know, I look at the two week forecast on, you know, whatever phone app you use, and you're looking for the nighttime temperatures in the 60s. Um, low 60s would be a dream come true with the days still being warm. Um, so one of the questions that we got is somebody that is still like super hot during the day, but the nights are going down in the 60s. So the choice you have to stop and think about is it's like, all right, let me look at my two week forecast. If I know that we don't have very long before the first frost, then you are going to have to direct, you're going to have to go ahead and direct sow that stuff. But know that you need to definitely be on top of watering it every day because of that heat um, and also to help push it along. Um, and you have to going to really pay, pay special attention to hoeing weekly as we talk about with our direct seeds. That's how I have weed-free beds, y'all, using our stand-up garden hoe. Um, so you just have to kind of do the very best you can. What you're looking for is those cool nights to get them to really break dormancy and to sprout. And if you're having really hot days, just pay close attention to the watering if you're in your window of six to eight weeks before your first frost. And for transplants being planted out, it really depends on a lot on what you're planting into. If you're planting into beds that have some type of um, mulch matter like bark or shredded leaves or anything, um, an organic mulch that's not going to get so hot from the heat, um, you have a little bit more wiggle room. But if you're using either black plastic, if you're a big grower, or Bio um, 360, which is what we use, the corn-based um, mulch film that we couldn't live without, but we want to use the black side up as we're going into winter. So we really have to wait until those daytime temperatures aren't rising in the 80s and 90s before we plant our transplants. And it's worth a little suffering to figure that out because all winter when it's cold outside that black film is going to benefit the roots of your plants and your plants that black film in addition to hoops and row covers is why i think i have so much cool flower success um, so for transplants it's kind of the same thing as with um, direct seeding. You just have to step back and say, all right, when am I supposed to plant? When is my perfect window of six to eight weeks? Where am I now? And what does the two week forecast look like? If it's getting better and better, then maybe it's worth waiting. If your plant transplants can take it. But if not, then you need to do some pension on your transplants, potentially, if they're pinchable. Um, and think about what you're going to do. What you don't want to have happen for both groups, transplanting and direct seeding, you don't want them to grow for too long 
before they go into winter because they get too big. A big plant does not go through winter well. A little transplant of a cool season hardy annual kicks winter's butt. So y'all remember that. That's really part of this equation. And don't make yourself crazy. Do the very best that you can, okay? So, welcome everybody to Ask a Flower Farm, and here we go. Um, I do have a special announcement to make before we jump into questions. Um, I wanted to show you some of our, one of the things that we have available, it's kind of a test product. This is our awesome canvas bag. When you buy a complete seed starting kit, you get it free. Um, but you can buy it also. You'll find it available on our website. I think it's 20 bucks. Best little thing ever. Um, all the girls here carrying back and forth to work has our beautiful little logo on it. And um, it's really the perfect size so you don't overload it. And we would love for you to have one. So you can find it on our website, thegardenersworkshop.com. And y'all, one of the most popular seeds that we sell are straw flowers. I mean, they're just rocking it. But guess what? Now live on our website, we sell them in individual colors. We've had the mix and we've had the peach, but now we have all the individual colors. And I would say you better storm them down and get them because um, you know how that's all. Um, my dog has something. <laughs> Tucker's collecting things. Um, and um, so you'll find those over on the store and we'd love for you to try them. I will tell you that we're now growing. Straw flowers is a cool flower. Um, but it's not winter hardy for me here. So we plant it in very early spring and then we succession plant it. We grow them all summer long, y'all, and we still have them in our garden. And if you keep them cut um, and we pinch half the crop and not half the other half so we can get early blooms as well as lots of great branching. So check out um, the straw flowers. And we still have a few catalogs left. So if you place your orders now, you'll get our catalog. Otherwise, you have to wait until um, January if you're on our mailing list to get, actually get one. So remember everybody to post your questions down in the little bubble at the bottom of the screen with the question mark in it. That way I don't have to scroll through so many names and I'll miss your question perhaps. So let's just jump right in here. Creek Haven Flower Farm. Started my cool flowers three weeks ago with very poor germination. I think my room was too warm. That's a common problem. I have since moved them to a cooler spot in my house, but I'm not seeing any action. Should I start over? I'm worried. I am way too late to start over and using soil blocks. First off, and this is just, everybody hears this. You have to hear everything I'm getting ready to say. Don't just hear part of it, okay? You have more wiggle room with transplants than you do with direct seeding as far as planting windows of time. And that is because when you direct seed, the seeds have to be gotten out in the garden while they're still warm days because you want them to sprout ASAP into a little plant to go through winter, right? So they have to be planted when there's still some warm days. Transplants do all their business indoors where we're controlling it. And so as long as your beds are prepared, ready and waiting out there, we have been known to plant transplants as long as the ground is not frozen, you can still plant those transplants. So I can't tell you whether or not your seeds are still good or not. Um, that's a gamble. But I say if you're in doubt, start keep them if you can. Start over again if you still have seeds because that's you still have time and um, it just depends on where you are in 6b slash 7. Um, I know here where we are our ground rarely ever freezes solid um, and that's when you don't want to plant cool flowers. Hope that helps. All right what cool flower seeds do I direct seed in zone 6? So here folks is a real big answer to a lot of people's questions. Your winter hardiness zone only tells you what you can either fall plant and or plant in very early spring. Um, so the winter hardiness zone, you look at your winter hardiness zone and you look at the winter hardiness zone of the particular cool flower you want to plant. And if it's hardy in your zone, then you fall planted. When you actually plant in the fall or even in very early spring is 100% based on your 
first and last frost dates. Your winter hardiness zone only tells you what you can fall plant. And I didn't even say this, and I'm gonna say it now, and I'll say it again at the end. If you have not already signed up for my special email list, that's not the one that you just signed up on our homepage at some point and you get our weekly emails. You need to get on my special email list because tomorrow we are sending out an email that has all, every one of my cool flower resources on one email, direct links all the podcasts, all the webinars, um, the book study, um, everything, the cool season, Flower Chronicles, which is what I would recommend that you actually watch. The cool season, Flower Chronicles really walks through figuring out what and when you can plant what you can plant. Um, so get on my newsletter list and you will find the link to get on my list in my Instagram profile. It's right at the top, get Lisa's farm news. Sign up there. If you're not sure if you signed up, sign up again. It won't send you to. It'll it'll weed you out um, the second time. So be sure and do that. All right, let's see. How big do your transplants need to be to be planted outside? So that is just a really great, great question, Red Sand. Um, so here, you know, y'all, everything has little details, right? Um, when we're going, when we're planting in warm weather, meaning spring and summer, I'll plant out smaller than what I'm getting ready to tell you, transplants, because they're gonna hit the ground running and start growing vegetatively immediately. Cool flowers are a little bit different because they're moving into cool weather. Um, they're not gonna really do a lot of top growth. So I like for my cool season hardy annual transplants to be, um, and to be a little bit bigger or on the high end of my recommended size of three to five inches um, for a transplant. I don't tell you how tall that is, I mean how long that takes, because it takes all of us a different um, amount of time depending 100% on our um, environment. So three to five inches tall, so I like the four to five inch tall transplant going into winter. It just gives it a little bit more umph, right, to to really sustain those cold temperatures for you guys. For the, Do you pinch your cool flower seedlings? Um, I pinch, I always tend to pinch half of my crops when I pinch them. That gives me the benefit of both worlds, of both early branching, which is what pinching does, and the non-pinched ones bloom earlier. Um, if we, the way that I pinch, because we soil block, I have never done this in plug trays, we either pinch in the tray and then give them about a week or so to recover from that pinch before they're planted. For all the reasons I just mentioned, they aren't gonna do a lot of regrowing out in the garden, um, so you really want them to get over that hump, or we plant them unpinched and pinch them in very, very early spring. Once, you know, we pull the row covers off and. February or March or whenever it is that the weather starts to warm up. Um, so if it's a brancher, it's potentially available for pinching. Um, and um, so you just have to kind of look at any single stem, like you would never pinch stock. Um, I'm just thinking, I can't think of another one right now, y'all, but stock is a single stem cool flower. We plant that in very early spring. Um, you would never pinch that. Stephanie asked, does, does Newport News have bulk compost yet? Not that I'm aware of, but I haven't been there for a couple weeks. Do I dare plants? This is Nessie. Do I dare plant my sweet William that appears to have some downy mildew? I have pruned these white leaves, but I'm worried about spores in the soil that might spread in my garden. Um, first off, you need to get a definitive diagnosis of whatever your problem is. Um, and a lot of times, this is a great opportunity if you are a commercial grower or you're aspiring to be, this is exactly what your extension agent is sitting in his office waiting to hear about. Um, first off, extension agents are usually getting asked questions about not such fun stuff. When they get questions from flower farmers and flower growers, they actually are like, oh, well, let me come out and take a look at that. They want to come visit, potentially. 
I don't know whether yours will or not, but you need to connect and make that relationship start to blossom between you and your ag agent. Um, and you, every the state, that's a state paid thing. It's a free service. And you just need to look it up and you call down there. Hey, I got this plant that's growing funky stuff. Can I send you a picture and you tell me what it is? Having a definitive um, diagnosis is like 90% of winning the battle. And secondly, I would almost guess that it's not something that's going to spread in your soil. I don't know how long. I mean, we plant those guys out at four or five weeks. If it's older than that, you just need to get it in the ground. That's the kind of stuff that starts happening with seedlings when they sit, whether in a soil block or in a tray, too long. Do you apply compost in addition to fertilizer? Always. Um, so we spent many, many years adding a lot of compost at every crop rotation. In addition, um, and we use organic dry fertilizer, which you can find the one that we use on our website. Um, we would add as a standard now, we put two to three inches of compost in between crops and or cover crop and or always add dry organic fertilizer um, to our beds between crops because y'all, we are demanding a lot from that soil. This isn't like some ornamental landscape where you plant something and you, you know, you feed it and it's like, oh, it goes on about its business. We are planting it over and over. We're cutting the flowers. We want more flowers. We want bigger flowers. Um, so you have to constantly be, um, feeding your plants. Um, and I see our friend Blue River Blooms is here. That's our Jessie. Jessie is a part of the Gardener's Workshop. And she always reminds me that if you're one of our students of any course, we'd love to see you post the little sunflower emoji and say hey to all your other um, classmates that are on here. So um, thank you, Jessie, for showing that and reminding me. So compost and organic fertilizer, repetitive use, on a regular basis is what really builds your soil to be healthier and healthier. Should I cover my cool flowers with the burlap? I'm kind of confused about the seeds that require light to germinate. All right, so the burlap that we use, we use it to cover, to just lay on top of our soil blocks immediately after sowing the seeds in the blocks. The only reason that we use that is to re help retain the moisture on the surface of those blocks because many and most of the seeds that we plant in block or plant at all indoors are on the surface because they need light to germinate and that just means a lot of times when it says it needs light that also really is an aka it needs a lot of oxygen to germinate and so our wide weave burlap as you can see, is a really wide weave. So it does a really great job of helping to retain the moisture on the surface. However, it allows the maximum amount of oxygen to come through and it allows light. Um, and so I just took the burlap off my um, some of my trays this morning because I can see they're just starting to crack. And I don't want them to crack and pop open during the day while I'm gone and grow through the burlap. So the burlap is another thing you have to really monitor. I mean, I don't even in there in the mornings. When I look at my blocks, I look at them and think, mm, there are no signs of life. I'll leave the burlap on till tomorrow morning. Or, oh, look, I see a bunch of those little necks like I posted today on social media. Um, you need to get those off, the burlap off. That's the only time you use the burlap. And the burlap really helps to retain the moisture on the surface because that's where most of the seeds are sown. In addition, cool flowers, we put cookie cooling racks on our heat mats for cool season hardy annuals because that cools down your heat mat just a smidgen. And that um, your cool flowers need consistent warmth to germinate, but they don't need consistent heat. And so we have found that works better. I had no longer, I had to actually buy a new cookie cooling racks like two years ago um, for, for niece and nephew cookie cooking day at our house at Christmas because all the cookie racks were out in my grow room. So the combination of the seedling heat mat, the cookie cooling racks and burlap 
we have really super germination um, on our cool season hardy annuals. And I'll just add this in here right now. Our Daucus, which is the False Queen Anne's lace, lace and the Ami Magus family, all of them, we put onto the seedling heat mat only for about 24 hours or so. Then I take them off the heat mat and just set them on a shelf, not under a light necessarily. Um, but they and just leave it there water them like when they dry each morning um but that they need a little bit even cooler temperature but that warm up really um helps them to get a jump on that all right let's see what we got here best way to treat rust i put the pulled plants in the burn pile but what do i need to do to treat the soil um so we don't treat anything um, and we typically don't, I shouldn't even say this, right? Um, we don't, haven't ever gotten rust on our snapdragons. We have found that fall planted snaps, which everybody, if you're in zone five, six, seven, eight, and nine, you need to be fall planting your snapdragon. At the very least, rock it. Um, but I have, we hear great success stories with all the different varieties. They're super hardy. Cornell University says zone five, y'all. Just read it yesterday somewhere. Um, so when they're fall planted, they are so well established that they start blooming earlier. They are more abundant, more disease resistant, and rust just does not seem to be a problem. So I cannot coach you on what to do. I know you need to destroy the plants, like send them away. Um, whether you burn them, we'd put them in the trash can if we'd have had them. Um, but certainly not planting snaps there. Again, I don't know what other plants are susceptible to snapdragon rust, if they are. Um, that's a great question for people like, you know, University of Maryland has Stanton Gill um, and a bunch of other folks that, and down at NC State, the NC State and University of Virginia of Maryland um, really do a lot of specific cut flower type um, work, and you can find tons of resources on their website. So that's where I think I would go um, and look for that. Are there any seeds that shouldn't be started on the heat mat? Um, so as I just said, Ami Magus and Dill even falls into this category and Daucus, all we do warm them, but then we take them off and we've just had, I mean, couldn't believe it. You know how I figured that out? I had them on the heat mat years ago and I, with the cookie cooling rack didn't germinate one two three i got fed up and just i needed the room so i just took the tray and set it up on one of our um shelves just getting it out of my way and left it well within about a week that entire tray had seedlings popping like crazy so sometimes it is our um mistakes forget abouts that do the best we are having an above average september 90 plus degrees with no end in sight we Will it be detrimental to, for my cool flower transplants to plant at now? So the, the only big challenge I would say to you, first off, um, I feel like for me, and because of course, as I just said earlier, we plant into that black bio 360 film. Um, that's when I start pinching my transplants, if it's pinchable, like snaps and um, anything that's growing big. Um, and you're feeling like, oh gosh, they're getting uglier by the day. I really need to get them in the ground. Um, if if pinching is a, a potentially an option, um, maybe pinch them. That'll buy you two weeks at least um, to get the temperatures cool. And we've done crazy things. We've done things like made makeshift shade situations. We've used row cover with hoops with the row cover loose because you don't want to trap the heat for Pete's sake, right? Um, but that shades like the west, southwest side so that they don't get cooked alive out there. But again, y'all, what we're trying to prevent is those plants from growing so big before they go in. Um, and that's why we're starting later and later every year. We've, we're literally just starting our seeds now um, because I know that I can squeak transplants even if it drops to freezing cold. I can plant my transplants into that black film with hoops and row covers and get them well rooted in versus planting them too early and fighting the heat, which there's just not much you can do about it. Um, so I know it is not easy, but that's, 
I'm trying to tell you what the end result is and you just have to figure out how to do it. You do not want those plants to grow very big um, before they go head into winter. They're just almost impossible to um, get through winter. Hey Lisa, have you started your cool season seeds? We are literally starting this week. Bobo um, has been doing it on Mondays and then Thursdays after harvest, and that's what she does on Friday. So um, we have right many of them started right now. We have all of our um, all of our snaps are started. All of our fever few is started. Our rubecchia has started and popped. Um, you know, we're growing a lot of new, we're growing all of our new Rudbeckias, Denver, Sahara, um, I forget the rest of them, but we have, we sell a lot of different, um, wait a minute y'all, I'm looking, oh, the Cherry Brandy, of course, Prairie Sun, Goldilocks, um, I'm growing them all, y'all. Anyway, so they're all started. Rudbeckias have historically been pretty super slow growers. To germinate and grow so um, that will be one of the first ones that we've always started thank you we have just started Amazon sweet William Amazon sweet William series there's rose cherry and red rose beyond shadow of a doubt if you're selling commercially hands down you can sell a ton every week um, is just the best and you can succession plant it we plant it in the fall we plant it again in very early spring we plant it again um we have someone at the door um i don't know who it is um so give me a top excuse me y'all come here too come here top um so you can succession plant them really um, so Sweet Williams, the Amazon series is just the absolute best. We love it of all. You know, I would really love it if it had that great multicolored bloom, but it doesn't, and we just make do. Do you start Ami only in spring? I start Ami in the fall. Um, and so we fall plant it, and then um, we can sometimes plant it again in very early spring. Just really depends on what our season is and what's going on actually, right? All right, y'all, I'm just gonna move so I can put Tucker in my office. I'm having to hold him since there's somebody at the door. Go in, in boy, good boy. So you'll get a little different view for a minute here. That way he's secure. Okay, sorry gang. Um, all right. Hey Lisa, have you un have you started your cool flower seeds? So I already answered that. Let's see what else we should I go ahead and put row covers over my transplants in the ground now with our days in the 80s and nights and 60s? No. Do not um, do not cover this early. We only put our I mean she can come in and she, um, yeah. Hello. Um, you do not put your row covers on until we don't put them on. Let's put it this way. Until night times are dropping below 26 degrees. Um, because generally when that starts happening, our days aren't quite so warm. The worst thing you can do is to put the row covers on too early, overheat your plants. It encourages them to grow too much. Again, for that end result that we don't want for them to be too big going into summer. I mean, into winter, sorry. Um, so just how you just need to have them there ready to roll when that time comes. Okay, Denise is asking, which seed should I be starting now in 7B? Are China asters cool? I have no, I really don't know if an aster is a cool flower or not because I can't grow asters. Because of asters yellows, that's a disease that leaf hoppers um, actually spread around and we have, I would love to grow asters, but I have never grown them. I have grown them, grown them with no success. So I really cannot answer that. How long are your seeds in the freezer and do seeds direct, are seeds taken directly after taking them out? So we just store all of our cool flowers in the freezer as a general rule. When we get them, we put them into a big Ziploc bag with one of our desiccant packets, let them sit out for two to three days so the desiccant can absorb any moisture, and then they go into the freezer. And it's the same process 
when you take them out. You take them out of the freezer and let them sit on the counter for two to three days, let them defrost, and let that desiccant packet do its job before you open it. Um, because condensation will get in there, but that's what the desiccant packet fix. And um, so actually I'm getting ready to take ours out um, probably end of next week maybe to direct seed those seeds. We already have our transplant seeds out because Bobo's working from them. Um, but um, so yeah, there is no specific time except it's just a good idea for your cool flower seeds to get a couple of weeks of freezing weather before you sow them because it like wakes them up, <laughs> right? All right, folks, it's 12 o'clock. Um, and I'm going to answer this one last question from Flourish Farm. Um, have you had success with straw flowers over wintering? I've only tried spring planting zone 7B. So let me tell you the story on straw flowers. And how convenient that we now have all the colors, right? Um, straw flowers are a hugely popular flower for cut flower farmers, for anybody. They're great fresh, they're great fro um, frozen, great dried. Um, so in the very beginning, years ago, we did fall plant. Um, and we got them all the way through to the end of January and we dropped down, this was probably like eight years ago, we dropped down to single digits and it took them out overnight. I mean, they were like tripled covered and it still took them out. But this is what I've learned. Straw flowers really, really do well being very early spring planted, even for people like us that get really hot and humid quickly. And because we now um, succession plant them, we plant them about every four to six weeks from the very early spring, six to eight weeks before your last spring frost, we plant them. And then about every six weeks after that, we're just constantly replanting them. Um, and y'all, they are just the best bouquet fillers. Um, and you will never, because people say, oh, well, you can dry them. Well, let me tell you, we have never had enough fresh. We have never had enough fresh. Suzanne and Bobo would love to have two nice sticks of straw flowers for every bouquet, <laughs> you know, so you can never, ever have enough straw flowers. So I find that just planting them in very early spring is great, and then succession planting them. So friends, if you want to get all of my cool flower resources in one email, so you can like file that away and flag it, put it wherever you put your stuff, um, it has, I think there's like 10 or 12 different cool flower things on that list. You've got to get on my special email list. And to get on my special email list, you have to go to my profile on Instagram and click the very top thing where it says get on, get Lisa's farm news or something. It's the very top one. If you're not sure if you're signed up, sign up again. That way you're sure to get it. It's going out tomorrow. And this is the kind of stuff that I send out. We send out a general email once a week from our farm, from the gardener's workshop. It is packed with great resources from our different instructors to how to do stuff and um, just all kinds of great stuff. This other list is my special list for those folks that are interested in flower farming and um, that want the stuff that I'm sharing. So friends, until we meet again, I'm just reading my list. I think we got it all, y'all. So go to thegardenersworkshop.com, get some straw flowers, order a bag, and get signed up for my newsletter so you get that special All Things Cool Flowers from Lisa tomorrow. And Dave Dowling's new podcast is on that email, too, with Scott Shepherd of the Flower um, Podcast. So, friends, thank you so much. And remember, see you over on Clubhouse at 1 o'clock today, every day, the Flower Farmer Show, every Wednesday. And I'm talking more cool flowers over there, and you can ask me more questions. So if I didn't get to your question, come on over to Clubhouse. Download the app, join, and then find me at 1 o'clock. Ciao!